Hello, welcome to my latest tutorial. This one is all about lenses. That's why I'm starting this first shot with a shot with a very long lens. Um, it's a, around, probably around about 250 mil at the moment. Um, so the camera's way off over there. Um, but yeah, this tutorial is all gonna be about lenses. And I love how with lenses, you can enhance how you see the world. It's almost like having a superpower. With a macro lens, you can make these tiny details of rock formations into landscapes. With a very long 300 mil lens, 1000 mil lens, we can take distant cities and lakes and trees, and we can make them vivid. We can make them fill the frame. And you can see more detail than you can perceive with your own eyes. I really like that about photography in general, that you can kind of enhance the way you see the world, it makes things stronger and more vivid. So we're going to start with a quick slideshow of some of my photographs where I've used different lenses to achieve different things and I'll talk you through that. Um, and then I'm going to just show you five lenses that I use when I'm out and about. There's three main lenses, I'll tell you those, but then there's a couple more lenses which are sort of specialist ones um, and I'll show you how they can capture the landscape and just talk you through how I use them to capture things in really fine detail and bring this kind of place to life. Often I'll have three lenses while I'm out here and I'll rotate between them. I'll be moving between details that are right in front of my face, like almost like canyons through the rocks, right through to details that are eight miles away, nine miles away, Manchester city centre, which is over there. So yeah, I hope this is useful and I hope this gives you a bit of an idea of how you can kind of be quite playful and quite experimental with using lenses. So I've pulled together a selection of images here that show what you can do with different lenses. We're going to look at macro lenses, long lenses, wide angle lenses. Um, I use them all and I try and use them in different ways. Each lens you can do really nice things with, um, but it's good to know the strengths and weaknesses of each lens. So I'm going to show you some of my photographs now and talk to you about the lenses I use to do them and some of the ideas that went into these particular images. And this first one is Buttercups in Cornwall. And it's a shot with a macro lens. It's a 105 macro lens. I'll share a bit more detail on it later in this tutorial but it lets me focus maybe 20 centimeters away from the lens. I can really focus in on these tiny bits of detail of the landscape and I can make it so it has a tiny depth of field. I can have the lens wide open so I can shoot at 2.8 and everything else is soft and out of focus. But the thing I'm focusing on, bits of the flower, bits of the um, leaves and grass around, is pin sharp so it really creates quite a dynamic look. And that's using a macro lens. And here's another one using a macro lens, again, using that shallow depth of field to really draw your eye to one element of the image, that fungi in the middle, letting everything else be soft. It really kind of creates a drama to the image that you don't get if everything was in focus. It kind of draws you into it. That sharpness on one image catches your eye, which is really useful. Here's another one where I've done that. This is a, um, a dandelion. Um, and I've let the sun behind go really soft, the grass in front really just focusing on one element, letting, it, letting the aperture be as wide as possible so you've got a tiny depth of field, just makes the things that are sharp, incredibly sharp, like pin sharp, it really draws your attention to them. In this one here, the same's happened. This is a moss that caught water from melting frost up on the roaches. And a macro lens allows you to explore these almost kind of micro landscapes and sometimes you can even, I could even look at that moss and not see how beautiful and detailed it was. But as soon as you put one of these lenses on, you're suddenly drawn into it. And you suddenly get absorbed by these landscapes and start photographing and suddenly start seeing the world on a different scale in a different way. Um, so yeah, it's great. It kind of, it's not just about photography lenses. It's about seeing, I believe. Um, and a macro lens tunes you into these tiny microscopic details. Another here, this is a, icicle in Trollers Gill in the Yorkshire Dales and using that macro lens you can really focus on the texture of the ice and the drip and the rocks but then let everything else just be abstract and almost kind of impressionistic. You don't quite see what's behind, it's a block colour, you kind of have to imagine it and the same with this one of a, a drip on a twig in woodlands. Um, focusing right in on the drip, the drip almost becomes a lens in its own right. You start seeing the shapes of the forest behind it, the sunlight but then in the actual photograph, the background is so soft, so out of focus because um, of that wide aperture. It's just the kind of almost block colors, almost suggested shapes. Here's one using the same macro lens, but in a slightly different way. This is a wider shot, um, but I'm using that incredibly shallow depth of field here in, in quite a creative way. I've picked one wave to focus on, and then I've let everything else go out of focus. Just behind that wave, just in front of that wave, 
And then as soon as you get to, when you get to the horizon, when you get to the sun, everything is incredibly out of focus. Again, it's all about using that one point of sharpness to really draw your eye to it, to create that drama, that one point where the image is just pin sharp. That's now we're going to look at a different lens. This is a 24mm to 70mm lens. And this is the lens I always have on my camera when I'm going out to shoot or when I'm just kind of wandering around. I refer to it later as a kind of all-rounder lens or a kind of safety lens as well. I know that if I get this lens out of my bag, I can be taking pictures quick and responding to these sort of spontaneous moments. And this was a spontaneous moment. This was a light that was only there for a few minutes as the waves crashed in, um, creating this rainbow. So I got the camera out, focused it quick. And so if it with a much longer lens, maybe a 300 mil lens, it's very hard to get your focus and light right quickly. So it's good to have a relatively wide lens on your camera so you can capture these fleeting moments. Also that 24 to 70 has a very wide aperture. It's, um, it's aperture is 2.8, which means the hole in the lens opens very wide and it lets a lot of light in. There's another tutorial in my playlist all about how to use manual exposure on a camera and that explains aperture alongside camera ISO and shutter speed. Um, so if you get a chance, look at that. It sort of ties in with this tutorial a little bit. So the reason I'm talking about a, a, a lens letting a lot of light through is that the image we're looking at here was shot in moonlight. That light in the trees to the top left is actually the moon by a full moon in Cornwall. And if you use a wide enough aperture, so it's letting lots of light in, if you use a long enough exposure, that I might have exposed this for about 20 seconds, and then if you push your ISO a little bit, the ISO is how sensitive the camera is to light, suddenly moonlight becomes light daylight, maybe a little bit more pastel colour, but it's got all the details and colours and texture of daylight. Um, we just don't see it with our eyes. So it's having that wide aperture is a good start point on this because you've, you know you can soak up light, that little bit of light that your eyes can only just see, your camera can let it through the lens, let lots of it through, and you can start picking up this lovely detail. And here's another one where using the wide aperture to pick up a very subtle light source was absolutely important. This is my hand moving through very faint bioluminescence in a Florida lagoon. It's about a 30 second exposure, but having that wide aperture as well allows me to let lots and lots of light through, lots and lots of light in over that 30 seconds. So I can suddenly take this very faint detail that you can see with your eyes, but only when they've really adjusted. You take that detail and you capture it and show it almost like this strange kind of flame. You can show it with real vividness. And also that wide aperture can allow you to create, work with very, very, very quick shutter speeds. So this would be working about a 5,000th of a second or an 8,000th of a second. And if you zoom right into this image, you can see the individual specks of water. There's so much movement as this wave kind of crashed onto the ship. But by using that incredibly quick split second shutter speed, because I've got that wide aperture, I know I can let a lot of light in in that split second, I can make those bits of water incredibly still and incredibly sharp. Wide angle lenses, I would say the 24 to 70 is quite wide angle, but we also talk about an even wider 18 to 35 mil lens in the tutorial. So those wide angle lenses can create images where you feel like the landscape, you feel like you can almost step into the landscape. You can do some really interesting things with perspective. In this one, we've got the tracks of the railway. And by, because I've got such a wide angle lens, you feel like you can almost step into it. And that perspective leads you into the shot, takes you to the distant hills, really kind of pulls you through the image. And sometimes a wide angle lens can really do that. I'm gonna show a few that are wide angle now. And the thing I love about wide angle is if you get that printer big and it's in front of you, I like the idea you can almost step into it. Looking at that photograph, it's almost like an experience. It's almost like being there. I love creating images that are close to being in these amazing places. And that wide angleness makes it feel like it's there in front of you. It makes you feel like you're there, which is really useful. Here's another one using wide angle cityscape, but that wide angle feel of the lens allowed me to make those red lights in the foreground quite an exaggerated shape, quite big, quite, you can see the perspective in them. Um, and that's set against the, the um, buildings in the background, the light of the buildings, but it's that wide angle lens allows the foreground, those lights of the cars to be big and bold and interesting. And again, we're looking at another one here with interesting wide angle perspective, where your kind of eyes are drawn into that jetty. It's quite a simple image, but by giving that width for the jetty in the foreground towards the, the bottom of the photograph, you feel like you could kind of step into it. It feels like it's kind of leading you through. Here's one 
which is very wide. And this is actually a very wide angle photograph, but it's also a stitched image as well. It's also made of a few wide angle photographs put together. There's another tutorial in my playlist that tells you how to um, stitch images together. But this is almost 180, 180 degrees worth of the view in front of me. This is a really wide expanse. So a combination of a very wide lens and then stitching those wide photographs together allow me to catch this vision where I'd have to turn my head to see it. I wouldn't be able to see this in just one look. I'd have to move my head around. So it's great for catching really wide details working with um, these kind of 18 mil lenses, 24 mil lenses. And again, another one, this is in Iceland where you don't want to just capture a bit of the landscape. You want to show the whole thing. Everything in front of you is beautiful. So you want to show it all. So a wide angle lens and particularly then working with stitching those images together digitally. So maybe five or six photographs from one wide angle lens allows you to really put the viewer in these beautiful landscapes. Sometimes when you're in buildings or caves, you can't get that far away. You can be a bit cramped. There might be a wall behind you. So that's when another reason why a wide angle lens is useful. You can capture a very wide expanse of what's in front of you. You can capture a lot left, a lot right, a lot above, and a lot below. Um, and you don't have to get that far away. Sometimes cramped conditions, it's, you have to, you end up sort of compromised. But by using a wide lens, you can show it all. You can put people there. I think, again, this is a stitched image as well. So I moved the camera around a little bit. Um, so it's a combination of those techniques, the equipment, which is the lens, which captures a lot, but then also stitching those images together, which helps with shots like that. And like this one, this is a candle lit um, vault in Edinburgh. I've only, lit, yeah, I've only used candles to light this, hundreds of them. Um, I didn't use any camera light, anything other than just hundreds of candles. Um, and again, you're seeing almost 180 degrees worth of the view in front of me. You can see the walls behind me almost and the wall above me. You can see a great expanse and hopefully it feels it feels to a viewer like they could step into that place. Um, a lot of the buildings I document, some of these are really hard to get access to. So I want to try and share them. I want to go in there and I want to give people the impression of what they were like. I want to make people to feel like they know these places. And that work working with a wide angle lens allows me to do that. And also the idea, this is up on the roaches, but the idea that a wide angle lens puts you there, it feels like you could step into it. It feels like the heather in the foreground's right next to you. The stones, you could almost step forward onto one. The stones left and right are kind of right next to you. I love that about a wide angle lens. And the way it frames the landscape, the landscape feels quite distant, um, but there's still quite a lot of detail there, but it's, um, but it's all about putting a view in, in these places, making them feel like they're there. And again, with this snow scene from um, the Owen Edge in the Peak District, you feel like you're there. I couldn't get that far away from it with this because it was so misty. As soon as I moved five meters further away, it got misty and I could barely see the rocks. So it had to be quite close. By using a wide angle lens here, I was able to be close, but get a big expanse of rocks, snow, all the landscape, the mist. I was able to cram it all in using that lens. And another here where you've got so much you want to show in a photograph. You've got all the sky, you've got the stars, you've got the way the northern lights are glowing on the rocks in the foreground. You've got, I don't know if you can see it to the left there, the, the road with headlights of a car, the distant clouds. There's so much uh, that was in front of me here. I stood there for a minute and took it in. And then I had to use a wide angle lens to show it all to, again, make the viewer feel like they were there. This is one in the Brecon Beacons, and sometimes I like to use quite a low camera angle with a wide angle lens. This is right down just above the height of the heather, so you feel like you could almost hear the crunch of the autumn heather. You could almost kind of get a sense of being there. You almost feel like you sat in the grass. Um, and then it's similar to the rock formation I showed a couple of photographs back. I'm using the trees as a frame, as a window into another image. So you've got a kind of photograph a frame within a frame which draws your eye through you've got the the hills in the distance which you might have picked up with a fairly long lens but by using a wide lens that's framed by the trees and the bracken so it just kind of it almost leads a viewer into it it almost feels like they could step into that view which i really like it feels like it's there in front of them and that's what you can do with wide angle lenses you can make a world for a world for someone to step into now we're going to look at some using a longer lens. We look at a 70 to 300 mil lens in this tutorial. And I've brought this set together because these are all about 
taking an element of the wide view in front of you. So sometimes when you look in front of you, you just see these little details. This was a wind farm and there was all clouds around, sea all around me. But by using a 300 mil lens, this tiny bit of the view I had in front of me, I could pick out and make big. I could fill the frame with this detail of the wind, the, the wind farm, the sun, the sea. So this set of images is all about just focusing in and pulling out these single details of the landscape and making them big, filling the camera frame with them using a long lens. We're on to this one, which is a strange cloud formation. I cannot remember the name of it. Um, I'll put it below in the, in the um, description. Um, but sometimes you get these lovely wave patterns that are very precise, often at the end of the day. Um, and I saw it, I could only just make it out in the distance. It was a very distant bit of my view as I looked at that landscape. But by using a fully zoomed in 300 mil lens, I could take that distant bit of the view and I can make it fill the frame. And then I can come home and I can share it. And my clever scientist friends can tell me what it is or I can Google it. And it's just, um, yeah, it's all about where you've got the macro lens, which I showed you at the start, and you're taking, you're focusing on the tiny details that you can almost not see because they're too small. The 300 mil lens, you're focusing in on the tiny details that are so far away that you can almost not see. Um, so I love, again, it's that idea of a lens almost enhancing your senses. Um, almost be, I know, I know I've said it a few times, almost being like a superpower. It's not just about the photographs you can take with a long lens or a macro lens. Um, it's about how you look. It's about when you put that lens on and suddenly you see the world differently, which I really like. Um, suddenly you see all these effects that you could barely notice. This is the peak district from a hot air balloon. Um, the valleys in the mist. These are probably two or three miles away, these trees, but that 300 mil lens allows me to really pull it out, fill the lens with it and just show this lovely rich details as you've got the misty valleys and the trees and the hills. And I think there's even a distant church in the in the far, in the kind of distance there. And a very similar effect here, but this is from a rooftop in Manchester. So it's um, a really atmospheric picture of sunset and it's quite misty and dreamlike. You don't see it all because once you put a zoom lens on, once you put that 300 mil lens on, you suddenly really see the atmosphere. You see the mist in the air. You see the fact that as the view gets further away, it gets lighter and lighter and fuzzier and fuzzier and more kind of abstract and dreamlike. It allows you to focus in on these atmospheric effects and make them more, make them larger and clearer to the viewer. So you suddenly get this kind of almost Turner-esque kind of um, sense of light. Um, but then with that one sharpness in the foreground, the one building it kind of draws your eye, gives it a focus, which I like. Here's one of those other strange effects of the light. This is a sun dog in Cornwall with a little flock of birds kind of flying in front of it, in front of where I could see it. Um, and again, this was a subtle light in the sky, not there too much, but by zooming right in and also by letting the exposure be darker than the camera would want it to be, making that view darker suddenly this slight detail and color that you could just make out, I could really bring out and really make vivid. And I could zoom in on that and make it um, incredibly, kind of lots more noticeable than it was to my eyes. I love this cloud, this kind of wandering cloud in the hills above um, a fjord in Norway, in the, in, in the mountains there. It was there for a split second and then more clouds rolled in. Um, there were no clouds there for a while, but just this one little split second, the cloud was there on its own. And it almost felt like it had a personality and the sun was catching it. You can see the sun on the hilltop there. It's just shining through that cloud. So there was this one bit of the landscape, the kind of slightly gray landscape that had a brightness and kind of sharpness to it. Here's one from central Manchester looking out towards Winter Hill, looking out towards the television aerial. Again, a tiny part of your view, but I'm able to zoom right in on it. And this was on a night where there was a very strange kind of atmosphere, very strange weather. There'd been fires out on the moorland um, for a couple of days so the air, the atmosphere is really heavy and if you look in the foreground you can kind of see that mist and that smoke obscuring your view creating this quite strange kind of atmospheric again it's kind of got a almost abstract almost kind of turner-esque type feel to the light and the way it's so minimal and but that long lens allowed me to focus right in on that to see this detail that um, was interesting and strange and really pull it out and make that the focus of the shot Here's another shot with a long lens. This would be shot with a 300 mil lens looking at buildings in New York. And there's another nice effect that happens with a very long lens. 
Once you start looking at objects that are quite a distance away, maybe a mile away, maybe half a mile away, the relative distance between those objects doesn't seem much. You don't get that much. The distance between those buildings and the size of those buildings at the front of the image compared to the back of the image doesn't feel that, that different. So everything feels kind of stacked. Everything feels a similar distance away. It's a little bit hard to explain. There's probably like a technical term for it, but I don't know it. But I guess it's all about it kind of everything feels stacked on top of each other. Everything feels quite close. In this image, it almost felt like a sort of Sim City, uh, still from a Sim City game or something like that. But nothing, the distant buildings don't feel that much smaller than the foreground buildings. So you get this lovely kind of stacking and it's quite an unusual effect. And it almost turns cities and nature into patterns. It almost creates kind of quite kind of ordered views of things because everything gets so stacked and so similar in size. So have a play with that. If you get a long lens, get up high and photograph the city and you'll suddenly feel like all the buildings are a similar distance away, um, which can be quite interesting to play with. And here's a final image, again, using a long lens and taking a tiny bit of the view in front of me and focusing right in on it. This was from a mountaintop looking down at a fjord in Norway, and this was maybe a mile to maybe a mile and a half away. And I just, with my eyes, got a sense of this shape. I couldn't see it very clearly, but as soon as I put that long lens in, I realized the shape had this lovely sort of mathematical shape, almost like these beautiful waves. Um, and probably if you were closer, if you were in the boat or if you're on the edge of the fjord, you wouldn't see it. That distance somehow creates a kind of purity. Sometimes if, you fo if, you, if you're up in a plane and you see a river delta from very high up and even if you're just looking at it, it suddenly takes on these almost mathematical forms. You see it in a really pure way from a distance. Um, scale is suddenly irrelevant almost. It's hard to, it's hard to explain. Um, it's almost this idea of fractals that you might get patterns at a large scale and patterns at a small scale that are very, very similar and have the same kind of, are caused by the same effect, but are just at different scales. And by using a long lens, you can really draw things out like that. You can really pick out the kind of purity of these patterns, be that um, a delta or dust or beaches from an aeroplane or these patterns on the water, you can just take, you can almost abstract these fine details of the world and um, see them in a real kind of pure way, which is really fascinating. So we're gonna head back up to Kinder Scout now and I'm gonna talk you through the lens I, I use and hopefully give you some more ideas on how you can creatively use lenses. Okay, so I'm gonna to talk to you now about the lenses I use. I've mentioned a few times this tutorial is all about how you can use a set of lenses on a camera and this camera is an SLR so it allows me to have interchangeable lenses um, and each of those lens is a different tool. It, it captures the world in a different way. So I've got macro lenses, long lenses, wide angle lenses. Um, so I'm just going to talk you through them. I'm going to tell you the three lenses I tend to have on me most of the time when I'm out photographing um, and why they're useful and what I use them for. So talk about this one first this is a 24 to 70 mil lens and this is the lens that if I get my camera out of my camera bag I can be shooting quickly I know that the focus isn't too critical I know that I don't need too much light to use this lens it's got quite a wide aperture at 208 at uh, 2.8 sorry f 2.8 um, so it's kind of my quick lens it's fairly wide it's quite long it's kind of a good kind of safety lens if I want to kind of capture something um, without having to use a long lens. Sometimes with a long lens, you've got to work on the light a bit more with the focus. Um, there is, a, in my playlist, there's a tutorial all about manual um, settings on a camera, which is probably really useful to watch after this, um, because if you're gonna start playing around with different types of lenses, you need to know a little bit about the kind of the aperture, um, that's the hole in the lens, the shutter speed, how long the lens is open. Um, so some of these, hopefully by now, my tutorials are all kind of feeding into each other. So if you watch that one, and then you go out and try a few lenses out. Um, that should sort of tie in with what I'm talking about here. So yeah, this is my fairly safe lens. It's got a, um, it can shoot fairly wide. So you can get quite a, that's incredibly light, but you can get a lot in, so you can capture quite a wide landscape. But also at 70 mil, that's starting to get fairly long. So we can kind of zoom into details. Um, we can get quite nice close-ups of stuff. It focuses fairly closely. Um, so it's kind of a, a safe lens. It's also got quite a wide aperture, which means um, you can make the background go really out of focus. Um, 
which can be quite useful if you're doing portrait work where you focus on someone's eyes, get that pin sharp and then let everything else fall off. That can be quite striking. Um, yeah, it's kind of a good safe bet lens, I would say. Um, the other lens I use, probably the lens I use um, the second to most um, is this, it's a macro lens, but I use it in many different ways. Um, a macro lens basically means you can really focus in on fine details. You can do real close-ups of objects. It's almost like a microscope. Um, this is a 105 millimeter macro lens, which means it's quite long. If you have a 28 mil millimeter lens, it's very wide. You get a big expanse. It's almost, it's almost like as wide as what we see with our eyes. If you start using longer lenses, a 105 is much more focused in on a certain point. If you use a 300 mil, which I've got there, and it's really focused in on a distant object, a thousand mil here really, really picks out things that are a long way off. Um, so the millimeter is how long, the, you say it's how long the lens is. Um, and some lenses are zoom lenses, so you can go from 24 mil to 70 mil, you can kind of um, spin it and you can zoom from one to the other. Some are fixed lenses, which is also known as a prime lens, which means you can't zoom on it, it's fixed at 105, it's zoomed into that certain amount, um, which can be really useful. You you have to kind of, if you're photographing an event or people in the room, you have to kind of move nearer and further away instead of zooming. Um, but that's good, that keeps you sort of engaged with what's going on. Um, but the main thing this is useful for, this 105 macro, is focusing incredibly closely. So we can go right in and see almost the individual bits of Oh, another really bright one. Sand in this grit stone. Sorry if it's a little bit windy up here. Hopefully it's not messing with the sound too much. Um, then we can go on in on these little bright blades of grass here. Is that too dark or too light? It's about right. And these leaves here, I'm going to just go to manual focus now um, and focus in on the texture on the back of the leaf, so let me get in as close as I can on that. Yeah, that looks okay. So it's that thing of, which I've mentioned a few times in this tutorial, of lenses, just being able to pick up more detail than you'd see with your eyes. I could look as closely as possible at that leaf or that stone. I wouldn't see the level of detail this lens can pick out, which is really great. I love the idea that a camera is almost like a a camera and a lens is almost it, like a superpower. It lets you see the world in much more vivid detail. This lens is also really good because it's got that wide aperture, so you can really have um, the background out of focus. You can have the background incredibly out of focus, which is great for portrait stuff. It's also really good because it's got quite a wide aperture for um, event photography, people photography, which I do quite a lot of, um, because you can do it handheld, you can be quick, you don't have to be too close to people, um, you can kind of duck around, it's quite a kind of, um, with that wide aperture, you can kind of be quite spontaneous with it, which I really like. Um, okay, so that's the macro lens. The third lens that I take out with me on virtually every photo shoot is a 70-300. This is, uh, I would say, a, a long zoom lens. Um, and the first lens I had on, the one that's the, the kind of safe bet lens, is a 24 to 70. I'm being watched by a sheep. Let me just photograph this sheep because it's, um, it seems to be very interested in my tutorial. Um, anyway, um, yeah, so that first lens goes from 24 to 70, and then this one sort of picks up where that one leaves off, so this goes from 70 to 300. So between those two lenses, I can get a very wide image that's kind of as wide as we see the world at 24 mil, to a 300, which means I can start picking out distant details. Um, so I can get rock formations that are a long way away, I can get distant trees at 300 mil, um, I can close-ups of sheep that seem to be interested in photography. Not anymore. It seems to have lost interest. Birds in the distance. And, yeah, so this lens gives me the chance of um, getting, result, getting resolution and in detail from far-off objects, um, which is great. I mean, I basically think between those three lenses I've talked about so far, if I'm in the landscape, I'm exploring nature, um, I, can, I can pick up everything I can see. If I can see it, I can get right in and 
pick up that detail from miniature landscapes, wide rolling hills to kind of long off objects as well. So it just allows me to pick up everything really. Um, this sheep definitely seems interested. Anyway, um, moving on to another lens. These next two lenses are ones that I don't have on me that often, um, but they could still be useful. This is a 18 to 35 mil lens. 18 mil is incredibly wide. It's kind of virgin on fisheye, particularly on this. This is a this is a full frame camera. I um, don't want to dig too much into the sort of um, technical side of it, but this is a full frame camera, which means it's quite um, it can capture quite wide angle scenes. It uses all the lens, so when it's fisheye, it, when it when you get such a wide 18 mil lens, it almost looks like fisheye. Um, but it's quite useful. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more and we've got our lovely shot of two sheep who seem very interested in what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, this is a good one for capturing everything, capturing something as wide as possible. So let me show just how wide it can be. So yeah, that's quite a useful lens. And then one final lens. Again, this isn't one that I have out with me that often. Um, it's just a very cheap, thousand mil lens that I bought a couple, uh, last year. Thousand, a thousand mil is incredibly long. And I mostly bought this to photograph the moon and stars. Um, but let me just see if I can show you. In the distance there, you probably can't see it on the filming I'm doing with the iPhone over there, is Manchester. So let me just see if I can zoom right into the city. Where is it? Unfortunately, it's quite a smoggy day. So we're not going to get much detail, but I can probably bring a bit more detail out in Photoshop. But these buildings are about maybe 11 or 12 miles away. And for using a thousand mil lens, I can pick up that detail that's so far away. Um, so yeah, I just, I really wanted to, I, I really like the idea for this tutorial of bringing out the macro lens, which means I can go from kind of showing a millimeter in vivid detail right through to this lens which shows buildings you can see almost see windows on buildings that are 11 miles away um, one thing you do have to watch out for if you're shooting on a very long lens um, that lens amplifies any movement you do so um, let me see if I can explain this so if you're using this is we're back to the 70 to 300 where is it? Um, if we're shooting at 70, you get quite a, w a wide area in, which means if your camera's moving a little bit, you don't really see it that much because it's not, it, it doesn't really um, show anything in too much detail. Whereas if you zoom right in at 300 mil, you can even see it if you, if you try it, you can see the view you're looking at j juddering up and down. So when you get to 300 mil, you need to go for a really quick shutter speed. Um, so I'm going for ooh, 8 thousandth of a second. And that will start to hold, that will start to do nice sharp images. You just have to, when you're shooting with really long lens, really increase your shutter speed. So you get that sharpness, you don't get motion blur. You might think you're holding the camera instead, incredibly still and steady, but actually you're not. Um, so yeah, use a very quick shutter speed when you're using a long lens. Um, and in this, you've even got the 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 um, tripod mount is actually on the lens because you want that to be as steady as possible. And you get the tripod deliberately stood on a stone. Don't stand it on the grass just to keep everything really fixed and really steady. Um, we've still got our sheep who's watching. Um, so yeah, I hope that's useful. It's not really a tutorial where you can do anything or try anything out. It's more about um, showing you how lenses can be useful and hopefully it'll give you a chance to try some out if you can borrow some off friends or um, I mean even some cameras don't have um, just have one lens like um, some bridge cameras where you uh, or in compact cameras just have one lens that can still be really useful and hopefully some of these ideas of how you can use that lens zoomed into different amounts to pick out different types of detail will sort of be useful to you as well. 
Um, so yeah, I hope that's useful. And um, yeah, I really enjoy playing with the lenses and just picking out all that interesting detail in the world. Um, have a look at the playlist, subscribe. Uh, there's loads more tutorials and they're all starting to tie together now. I want this to feel like a sort of almost comprehensive kind of overview of photography, landscape photography, um, creative photography, um, and hopefully they're starting to tie together now. So have a look at some of the others there, particularly manual photography, because that really ties into how you use these lenses and how you make the most out of them. Um, and if you've got any subjects you'd like me to cover, please get in touch. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching. And the sheep here. <laughs>